Hey everybody, welcome back to Faraday Research and I'm doing another test here. So what I've done is I've hooked up my uh, circuit to a full weight bridge rectifier. Now, I got a 70 ferret 12 volt super cap bank. About five minutes before, this thing was not working. It was totally dead and it's now, it's charging it. Now I did an amperage reading and because I put that resistor there, this thing is pumping out 90 volts AC at one amp. And I was like, what? Are you freaking kidding me? So I said, oh, get me my super cap bank. So I hooked it up to my full weight bridge and the ground is actually going to my oven. And this cap bank was dead. It wasn't working. And within a matter of about five minutes, not even, about three minutes, now this thing is actually working again. It's charging this 70 ferret 12 volt cap bank. I'm just like, wow, are you kidding me? This is friggin' unreal. So it looks like the plasma generator is something that's really tangible. It's charged in super caps. Like, even with my spark cap generator, it's good for active power, but trying to get um, capacitors charged. Well, this thing's blowing it away. It's like almost fully freaking charged. This is unreal. I'm totally friggin' dumbfounded. This thing was dead. And know how many amps it takes to get a one amp super cap bank charged? Holy crap. I am like speechless right now. This is freaking cool. That's 70 ferrets. That's a lot of friggin' cap power. You get hit by 70 ferrets, this could melt steel. Like, you could actually make a welder with this. That's a lot of friggin' storage power in a cap bank. Look at that, it's almost fully friggin' charged. Oh my god. And it's not even five minutes. So, because of that, I put the smaller one, and guess what? I got it blinking. So now I'm creating a frequency, like a pulse motor. So it's pumping it and I'm generating like, uh, I'm doing my amp reading and it's showing one amp. And I believe it now because look, this cap bank's almost fully charged. Holy crap. I'm sh uh, sorry, I'm shitting myself right now, sorry. This is awesome. So it looks like everybody, uh, this might be the direction I'm going. This looks really, really, really promising because this is what I'm after, charging super caps. So I got the bigger one. I'm going to try charging the big one and see what happens with that. If it get charged this 70 ferret, the other one's 500 ferret. This is freaking awesome. I'm, I can't believe it. It's actually charging this thing. Holy man. And this is only taking about three watts, uh, six watts, I think it is, of power to run the plasma ball. Like, it's running off AC right now, but it, it's actually a DC power source inside. So I could always hook that up to a battery or a capacitor bank and actually run the plasma ball off that. Wow, man, this thing's charged. Holy cow. I'm going to have to shut it off soon so I don't blow up my cap bank. <laughs> Look, it's done. It's charged. That bulb is 12 volts. Wow. This is freaking awesome. I, I, I'm speechless. Really, I am. And with my spark app generator, I'm, I'm, char I'm creating 10 times the power, but I'm having so much trouble charging super caps. So... The spark gap is fine. That's okay. That's an essential part of the system. But what my missing component in this whole equation is the plasma field. That is where the synthesis of electricity happens. And I've been listening to a lot of lectures by Eric Dollard. And he did a whole um, series on energy synthesis. I'm going to probably put that link in there and you guys watch this video. I don't care if you watch it 50 times. 
If you understand this video, you'll understand this. Because he explains the field, the relationships of the magnetism and the dielectricity and counter space. He explains everything in this video. It is extremely, extremely important you listen to the, uh, watch this video from beginning to end. It's, it's well, I think it's a, about an hour long. But I don't care if you have to listen to it in your car, listen to it at work on the headphones, but you learn what he is teaching you in this video. It's extremely important because, because what he's taught me there is what I'm applying here. And look at the freaking results I'm getting. Like this cap bank was dead. In order, and this is 70 ferret. That takes a lot of output power from a charging system in order to charge this up. Like if I hook this directly up to a power supply, it will draw like five amps at like four volts. But this thing's putting out 90 volts, or sorry, 92 volts AC. So divide that by two gives you your DC voltage. So that's 45 volts at one amp. And I'm pumping that into this. That's why this thing charged so fast. Now, this cat bank, if I let this uh, light go, this thing will run for almost five days. As it is, it'll run for five days. I've already tested it, it runs for five days. This is a 12 volt um, um, a blinking light that you can buy at your uh, local electronic shops. This thing's like cheap, it's a couple bucks. But anyways, it doesn't draw a lot of amperage. It's uh, like 30 milliamps to run it, but it's 12 volts. So I know this thing's fully lit right now and it's a, a full 12 volts. Wow, that's awesome. So I, I hate to say it, but I think uh, I know the direction I'm going now. It has to, uh, you got to get into the plasma stuff, everybody. The plasma is where the, the, the energy synthesis happens between magnetism and the dielectricity. And when they conform together as one, you get power. And because of this power flow inside the plasma ball, you're getting that plasma to create the arcs. And when those arcs and streams of power are coming, that's the energy synthesis. That's where the, where, uh, the electrons, the dielectricity and magnetism all converges together as one. And that creates the power. Like I, I started this thing up earlier and I actually touched one of the plates. I got a freaking jolt. Like, I'm like, ow, like it really hurt. That, that was 92 volts of pure raw power coming off that, uh, you know, plasma ball. I was totally shocked on how powerful that was. So if you're going to play with this stuff, be careful uh, with the plates. Don't touch them while they're in operation. You're going to get a very, very decent lifter. So my direction is what I'm going to be doing is I am going to modify this ball plasma ball it's right at two kilowatts so i am going to modify it into a five or a six kilowatt bulb which is going to create even more power and if i can do that accomplish that it's actually picking up my sound waves i got it on the sound so if you play music with it it'll actually start flickering but uh yeah um if i do that then um I'll be getting a substantial amount of power coming off it. Now, I can also go the other route and actually construct my own plasma ball. Now, there are companies out there that make, um, uh, like, uh, I have a custom plastics company. They specialize in acrylics. Now, if I can get them to build me a chamber and uh, hook up um, uh, a non-conductive valving system in it, and purchase a bottle of uh, neon gas and construct a very powerful Tesla coil, which I'd be using this system as the source of the power and create a plasma state like this. And then I would have my collectors. Now I got one other ace up my sleeve. I haven't really told anybody about it, but I will in the near future. 
It could be a real game changer as far as getting a huge amount of potential coming out. The most important thing, like Tesla said in his writings, I'll repeat again, from the spark gap generator, you must take that spark gap power and put it in a condenser, which he was talking about as a capacitor. The second you get that capacitor charged, you can do whatever you desire with it. You can make it AC, DC, whatever you want. That is the key, is get this raw power into a storage bank. Now I could hook this up to um, uh, uh, an inverter, and I can power an inverter, which would power your devices. So I got the big 500, uh, 500 ferret super cap right here. I got that. If I can charge this up, and I already know this runs um, a 1500 watt inverter. <laughs> oh, we're laughing. We're friggin' laughing. Because I got a 1500 watt. You can buy smaller ones. They're like two, 300 watts. And then you can power like household appliances with it. So you have a usable power source. So, and you're only using six watts of battery power and you're powering appliances with only six watts of battery power. That's pretty impressive. So yeah, see, this thing's fully charged now. This will run for about five days because, you know, the, the, the bulb only takes only about 30 milliamps to run that, like very little power, maybe even less. Yeah, less than 30 milliamps. But anyways, irregardless, this thing charged up real fast. Like less than four minutes, five minutes, it was already charged. And I'd just begun. So, review the circuit. Before you go to earth ground, put a small, tiny little resistor in there. If you're getting up in the high voltage range, you got to be very careful. It can become extremely dangerous. Instead of using yourself as earth ground... You're going to have to hook it up to a proper ground. And this makes uh, perfect sense when you see these big motor drivers. They got cables, grounding cables that are this thick. Well, that's because the amperage, uh, the uh, electrons are being drawn from the ground. They're not being drawn from this. This just disturbs it. So you got voltage coming this way, and then you got the, uh, uh, the amperage and the electrons coming from the ground. So, and they're converging together. That's what's happening. And I think a lot of people don't really understand that. And it's becoming very, very evident. This is exactly what's happening. Now I'm starting to understand electricity way better. Way, way better. And I'm getting fast results. Wow. That's cool. Man. Man. It's freaking awesome. Okay. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, descriptions, in the, uh, uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe in the bottom corner. Oh, that piezoelectric uh, crystal. Okay, well, the thing that I bought turned out it was a mini speaker. It was not a piezoelectric. But what I'm going to do in the near future is they have them on Amazon for pretty cheap. So if you go on Amazon, you can find them. Just type in uh, piezoelectric transducers. And they use them as guitar pickups if you hook up a guitar to an amplifier. And that's what they use. So get the largest one you can. They come really small and then they come fair size, you know, 60, 70 millimeter diameter. Get the largest diameter one possible. They're easier to work with. But anyways, I put a link on one of the guy's uh, comments there of the video that shows the guy doing it. So he was putting in about 19 volts. And it was getting a 480 volts out with a piezoelectric crystal uh, transducer. So you might want to check that out. But anyways, I'm at 14 minutes here. It's going to take a while to upload this. Uh, don't, forget, uh, don't forget to become a patron. And we'll see everybody soon.